Welcome back guys. In today's video, we traveled north to do some surf fishing in one of the country's wealthiest beaches. There's a super hot Florida Pompano bite going on. Tight, woo! That is a monster. And we are excited to fill our cooler. Fish on, fish on. All right guys, I'm hooked up on a fish. Actually, Brian saw the bite. You really have to pay attention to these rod tips when you're fishing, because you just never know what you're gonna catch. And the rod tips, you keep them tight. And then as soon as a fish bites it, it usually goes slack, so you know there's a fish on. Now it's starting to fight a little bit. Oh no, I don't know if it just popped or it's swimming at me. It just popped. All right, just lost that fish very close to the surf right there. Such an unfortunate thing. Nice job, though. So I thought you had a fish there. Yeah, that was a fish. All right, let's get the next one. That's we got two right. this morning before we even get the camera on, so yeah. things are okay. And this video is brought to you by Landshaw Glogger. I'm pretty sure he's still on there. Just saw that rod bouncing. Silent Frank is here, and actually Silent Frank saw that happen, so thank you, Silent Frank. It's Pompano, pretty sure. I'm gonna keep the rod tip up and just continue to reel steady, but when he gets close to the shoreline, I'm gonna drop the rod tip, so I keep him on the line, and I'm gonna drag him up the beach. Nice fish, nice fish. Nice fish, buddy. Oh, hooked on his line. I got wrapped. This is what happens yeah. when they put their cart five feet from your poles when they had a whole beach to put it in. All right, that's a nice one, Sizzle. Yeah, all right, we got that crazy tangle out. Sorry, or else I'd be more excited, but you know, I wanted to get my fish away from them, fishing so close to us, and that happened. So, not my fault at all, but this is a nice pompano. I wanna clean it all up so I can show you here. Check it out. Ooh, that's a nice one. That is a nice one. That's a nice average size fish for around here. And I would consider that, you know, you don't, need, well, you don't need to measure them and know that they're a keeper, that's a good fish. So they gotta be 11 inches to the fork, total length. And this fish definitely over that. Beautiful, heck yeah. But today I'm using Captain Paul Spurco Pompano, special custom Pompano rigs today. And you can buy these actually at the local Snook Nook. And you can see here that this is a size one circle hook, very light, tiny hooks for these pumps. And then on the other side, we got a swivel and then um, the uh, attachment there to attach our sinker for the beach. I'm tight, I'm tight, I'm tight. Just wanted to catch up to that fish. This seems like it's a nice, nice fish, putting up a good fight so far. I'm just trying to keep it bent, not really trying to pump the rod. Oh yeah, it's what we want, it's what we want. Woo! Heck yeah! That's what I'm talking about, another beauty. Gorgeous, gorgeous pompano. So now we figured out that these fish are actually in closer. So we're gonna reel up all of our rods right now and reel them and not cast them out as far as we've been casting. I literally just reset this rod and got that bite because I didn't cast as far this time. So now we kind of figured out where they're hanging out. We got a couple hours left of this moving water and coming tide. And hopefully we can catch some more, but I'm using the um, Fish Bites shrimp flavor along with fresh shrimp tipped on the uh, circle hook. Beautiful fish. Another keeper all day. Heck yeah, baby. Bites turning on. Frank got one? Frank, you got one? Oh. Uh, Frank had one that fell off. All right, off. let's get reset, get the Mac back out. Two out. We're using some very specific gear so you can cast further. We got these special reels, we got these nice Akuma surf rods, they're awesome. And we got 12 pound, Sizzle, what size mono we got on there? The main line. <coughs> um, 20 pound mono? No, it's not 20. Oh, 15. It's, <laughs> it's 15. 15 pound mono main line to a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader to these hand tied rigs from Captain Paul Spurco, who's a commercial guy, so this is the stuff. That's what can help you get out there and reach the pompano. They seem to be a little closer right now, but a lot of times they're way out there. Well, she's got it. Yeah, there's a fish on here. Oh no, I've got her line again. She's on the other side of my line. Hold on. Pull them up. Get them up, get them up, get them up. All right, guys. I'm getting pretty frustrated out here with these other anglers next to us, and they're constantly catching our lines. They're constantly fishing in our space. We were here first, like Brian told you this morning, but honestly, like, what would you do in this situation? Because she was on my line once again, and she's cooked that rod multiple times, and they set up, you know, 10 feet from us. It's not cool. I would never do that to somebody. So just comment down below what you would do in a situation like that. We've asked them to move multiple times. They will not, they refuse. And they have the whole pack half behind them of the beach to themselves, literally. This is not fair to us. 
definitely a keeper, probably 12, 13 to the fork, but another beautiful fish. And this is the back half of the incoming tide, so that seems to be how they're chewing today and casting not too far out either. All right, I think I got a fish on. Yeah, I'm tight. I'm tight. Yeah, he just jumped. He's jumping out of the water. All right, we're just putting in our time. We're getting bites for sure, but it's about like every 20 minutes or so we get a bite. Draw a tip down. Another pompano, baby. All right, pompano number five, I believe. We caught a couple off camera this morning, I believe we said earlier, um, and that's how it goes. We weren't even ready to film and caught two. And that guy looks like he's gonna be a keeper. I'm gonna check real quick. Almost 11 and a half to the fork, but you know what? They look exactly the same on a fork, and he's a keeper fish. So I'm allowed to keep him. Nice. The wind is really starting to pick up. It's blowing now. Yeah, it's blowing. Holy cow. You can see my lustrous hair blowing in the yes, background. Yes, he needs a haircut desperately. You need to go to the haircut salon, dude. <laughs> Maybe I do. It's him. He's on there. Dude, the second we put out this rod, instant fish on. Woo! It is getting gnarly out here. You can see these waves picking up, and it's just like I keep talking about the wind. It just keeps getting windier. Now I'm getting sandblasted. Yeah, Sam, but I thought I was going to reel this one in Sizzle. Oh, no. He's so mean. I'm terrible I yelled, person. I yelled your name. I yelled your name. I said, You're Sizzle. totally right. I ran to the camera totally automatically. Right. I wanted you to catch a fish. It's a monster. It's a nice one, man. I'm sorry. All right, well, you know what? We get it right back out. Hopefully, we catch another one. <laughs> Woo, finally my turn to get a fish. Put in. Hooked up. I'm hooked up. Light drag I need, you don't need a lot. You're not, not gonna horse them, you're just gonna ease them in with the waves. Rod tip down. There you go. Nice fish. Woo! Nah, reel down, now that he's on the land, I'm gonna reel down. <laughs> Still gets nervous. Yeah, I do. That's a nice one. All right, hit my pombo now. Ah, uh, he's very sandy. The sizzle, get him off the hook. <laughs> All right, this wind has really got nasty. Like, you know, we're gonna get sand blowing, so we, we gotta run home. Back at the house, guys. Time to fillet up our delicious Florida pompanos. There's a couple of the biggest ones that we caught. Super excited to eat these guys. It's been quite a while since I've had some fresh, delicious pompano. I'm also wearing my Florida pompano sterling silver, solid sterling silver necklace, which is a pendant available on my website. Custom pendants, all nautical pendants like this guy, redfish, snook, sea turtles, all that good stuff available on my site. Just click that information down below. So we're gonna dive right into this fish and I'm gonna do something slightly different today using my six inch dar sizzle curved fillet knife, custom fillet knife from smithsproducts.com. And I'm gonna have my promo code down below for 15% off plus free shipping, but there's only a limited quantity of these awesome knives. So what I'm gonna do is put this fish straight up and down and we're just gonna knock his head straight off. And what I'm gonna do is gonna start off by his eyeballs right here and we're gonna cut in Kind of a little difficult when the fish is a little small, but that's okay. And then we're just gonna cut down. Basically what you're doing is you're outlining around his head and then going up where the pec fins are, right around the pec fins and then coming back up and basically making a U. So you just knock the head out like so. And that's out of the way. Saw somebody else do this on social media and I figured I'm gonna give it a shot. And so far I like it. The head is completely out of the way, but look how much head meat there is in this fish. It comes all the way up. So you really just want to take advantage of all the meat in a pompano because there's a lot in the head. So now we're just going to do our normal fillet just like anything else. And as I always say, a sharper knife is way safer than a dull knife. And this little six inch curved fillet knife is just perfect for guiding right along these bones. Oh, this looks so delicious. I'm so excited to have some pompano. I'm going to go just like any other fish. And this knife was so sharp, I just cut through to the other side by accident, but I can fix that. There we go. And then just slab it off like any other fish. Look at that. That's where I cut into the other side. It was so sharp. All right, look at that. Pretty sweet. We got a little bit of the stomach right here, but that's not a big deal. You just come right in here with your knife. Outline that out, take it out. And then we're gonna skin it. Same exact knife, bring it close to you. Bring your, make sure you keep your knife a little up from the skin here because there is a red bloodline that runs right along their skin and you can cut through their skin pretty easy, but just keeping your knife up slightly and kind of just feeling as you go along, 
get the job done. And I got a little bit of skin there, but once again, sharp knife just knocks that right out, no big deal. And then, last but not least, we take out this red bloodline, and I did bleed all these fish. I bled them in a bucket, and then I put them on ice. And basically what I did was just rip their gill plates out while they were alive. And then you just knock out this bloodline, which would have been much bigger if the fish wasn't bled. And now we got two delicious pompano loins right here. Upper and bottom loin. Beautiful, delicious, super cool, easy method right there. And uh, try it out on your own. But you can see this fish was full of eggs. I guess they come down here and they spawn. So that fish was uh, full of eggs. But pretty cool. I'm excited once again to have some fresh pompano. So I'm going to finish up the other side of this fish and then meet you guys in the house for the cooking we put in portion of this video. You got the camera, Aunt Candy? Yep. All right, good. All right, guys, welcome to another edition of Cooking with Putin. This is the Pompano, my Aunt Candy's holding the camera, edition, <laughs> family edition. We got our sizzle here, and thanks, of course, our sizzle for that new way of cleaning Pompano. Yeah. I actually like the old way, all the way better. You don't open up the guts as easily. Yeah, the, I, I finished the rest of the fish the normal way. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, so I, again, I got my aunt here. We're celebrating our anniversary still, anniversary week. Month. <laughs> it's a month. I, I can't believe she's still with me, so I'm just celebrating the heck out of this Birthday thing. Birthday slash month. I'm sure you guys uh, slash agree. Anniversary month. So we're having one of our favorite recipes for Pompano. It is, we changed it a little bit, but it is a coconut panko encrusted with Darcy's special sauce. Yep. Now, I'm not going all through the, all the whole recipe, but the recipe will be in the description of the video, so you can check it out. But the sauce is basically reduced coconut, coconut milk. milk. Mm -hmm. And then you mix it with uh, lime and some jalapeno uh, peppers. peppers that you that you cook and, and and blend in there, and it's quite delicious. Yes. And then I just did a simple coating on the fish on the pompano, which of course you know flour as you can see here, and egg and into the coconut stuff. And here we're gonna go. We're gonna plate right now, Sizzle. And Candy, why don't you come here and get a little closer? Get on this plate. Can you see this plate? Focus on the plate. There you go. There you go. Right. Darcy got her special rice. I know my arms in the way. Special rice is jasmine. It's jasmine rice. Here we go, big thing. Then put some fish on here. Well, that one might be too hot, Sizzle. Here we go, look at these nice pieces. They're golden brown, everybody. And Sizzle, you wanna put some sauce on there? Go ahead. Well, you want me to do it for you? Sure. All right, how much you like? You like a lot, right? That's fine. Perfect. Look at that. You got a nice shot of like that candy? It looks delicious. <laughs> All Amazing. Right. Right. All right, Sizzle, you try it, dive in. All right, here we go, here we go. I already know it's gonna be amazing. I literally not have, we have not cooked this in ages. There's a little bit of uh, prep work involved and it's a little time consuming, but besides that, it's worth it. Yeah, the pompano is one of Here the most go. delicious fish out there. It's white, it's a little bit oily. You can also use it for sushi. It's delicious. Of course, we got some nice land sharks. This video brought to you by Land Shark Lager. What do you think, our sizzle? Did I do it again? Do what? Make something so delicious go. that you can't believe it. Go! <gasps> We're gonna say it at the same time. Oh. It's delicious. The sauce just completed. It's an amazing sauce. You guys have to make it. I'm going to put it down in the description below. But thank you so much for joining us in today's adventure. Until our next video, follow your dreams, dreams and, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. And check out this next video, which I picked exclusively for you. All right, guys. Ooh, he's swimming fast. You want to get the net? Yeah. Let's get the small net quickly. All right, got to follow your fish, guys. Got to follow your fish. Got a nice fish on. We're good. We're good. We're good. Get ready. Get ready. Wow, they're so strong. So crazy. Nice. That's a solid one too. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. I'm excited. All right, we're not gonna mess too much with the fish guys, but today we're up here in beautiful Stewart, Florida, freezing my freaking butt off, and I can feel this fish nibbling my jig the whole entire time using a goofy jig. Let me pop this right off. That's a really nice pompano. Been wanting to do this forever and catch them on goofy jigs right here in the St. Lucie Inlet. And that is a beautiful, beautiful pompano. Look how beautiful. It's gonna be so delicious. That's a stud too right there. All right guys, but basically I wanna get right back to fishing because there's schools that are coming through here in the area real quick. So let's see if we can get another one on here and then I'll show you exactly what I'm using. So you guys can come out here and do this too. Nice job, our sizzle. Come on, baby. <laughs> Whoa, they dart all over the place. This is how you lose them so quick. All right, here we go, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Here we go. Yes! Woo! Slaying it. All right, right back to fishing. Oh, got 
got something? Got something. I heard you. They're right back there. All right, guys, hooked up. Hooked up on another fish. I think it's the target species. Yes, it is. Waiting for Brian with the net one of these days. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Woo, they just take a scream and run. Look at that. I'm a slacker. They really pull hard. Like, it's just shocking how hard these fish pull. And they're the most delicious tasting fish ever. Fish! I got a fish! Commercial These guys. Nice commercial guys are helping us out. Yeah, commercial guys are talking to us over here, giving us a little pointers. Come over here, babe. Yeah, woo, nice. <laughs> All right, just talking to those guys over there. Got another pompano in the boat. That's what's up. We're getting closer and closer to our limit here and just really learning like how to do this because we have tried this many times in the past and over the last couple of years coming here during this time of the year when the pompano are running good and just kind of paying attention to what the commercial guys do around here. And that's how you usually learn to catch more fish. Come on, dude, work with me. It's very slimy. Got hooked right here in the corner on the actual goofy jig. And that's a three quarter ounce. And then this uh, teaser kind of buried when he was swimming, which is no big deal. And he wasn't going anywhere, double hooked. Dude, he's buried. Mm. Usually you land these fish pretty green. You eat it pretty close to the boat. There he is. It's a solid pound, pound and a half -er right there. Yeah. Beautiful fish. So cool looking. Woo, he doesn't want to cooperate. There he right. is. In the cooler. In the cooler he goes. That is Pompano number four yeah, for me. The, oh, my food, I'm a cooler. All right, let's get back on these fish. Woo. Nice one. They get all pretty and golden when you land them. There's a couple nice ones there. Filling up the cooler, having a blast catching these guys. And like I said, just learning as we go along here. Oh, he's hooked up again over here. All right, it's time to get on the back on the spot. You got to keep moving as you drift and get back on these fish. Look at the size of this pompano. <laughs> oh my God. Freaking huge. Dude, that's a slug. Oh my Lord. Look at the size of that thing. That looks like a jack. Holy sh**. That's insane. <laughs> I've never seen one that big. That's all day five pounds. You're welcome. No problem. That's Whoa. a trophy. That's a trophy. Look at that thing, y'all. <laughs> Commercial guy's slaying it over here. <laughs> Sick. You're welcome. See? <laughs> anglers help anglers. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Sick. Our pleasure. Yeah, no worries. That's sick. <laughs> I gotta get one. Let's go. <laughs> gotta keep, gotta keep moving. Uh, it's a drift situation here in the inlet. We're done fishing. We'll give you a, a tackle time about yeah, exactly how we did it. All right. But right Say now again. you gotta stand a bite in the tide. Say it again. I was talking to the people. Oh, I'm sorry. Tell them when we're done, we're gonna do a tackle time because we can't stop the fish right now. It's a bite, very tide dependent. We're switching from, it's a slack right now, high slack. It's about to start going out and the guys were saying uh, that they've been biting any outgoing too and usually it's incoming. But anyway, they bite both yesterday and the, the outgoing, so we gotta stay on the outgoing right now. At least for the top of it. Getting hit again. I'm out of the zone, I'm sure. There we go. Nice. Nice job, Sizzle. Nice. I got the net. I'm going to do it myself. Are you going to do it yourself? Yes. Just do it. Do it professional, like a fly fisherman. Let's see, Sizzle. Like a fly fisherman, I'm going to do it myself. Woo! Woo! He just Sizzle. jumped out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> he literally just came up and jumped. Or it was probably part of my bending the rod there. But guys, the bite is turning back on. Look how gorgeous that fish is. Oh yeah, he's nice and clean. Really pretty oh, clean Oh, you got a bite, you got to move. All right guys, time to turn around and get back on these fish. And we're gonna show you exactly how we're doing this and post it on the Fish Angler app so you can come out here and catch your own big pompano. Right out here, cast as far as you can. Noish! Hooked up, come up front. <laughs> Brian's got one now. Bite's on fire. Hopefully. It's turning on, it's turning on. Looks like it's it. I think it's the right species. How do you know? You can't even see it yet. No, there he is. Pretty. They run on the surface. It's really cool. Pomp Woo! Pompano are a blast. They remind me a lot of like bonefish. They remind me of permit. 
Yeah, they're super cool. I need cool a little looking. more drag. I need Yeah, Brian permits. is like spinning it on his drag over here. You're going to use really light tackle with these guys. What are we using? 12 pound, uh, 12 pound floral leader? I have 20. Oh, 20? Yeah, I'm using 20. And you can use like 15, you can use like 15 pound braid. And these are nice light rod, man. The fish are going to be under five pounds. You know, five pounds is a monster. That one that they caught, that one the commercial guys caught before was six pounds. It's huge. Look at them permitting right now. It's going around a circle yeah, on this yeah, flat yeah. side. Yeah. And, um, he's caught a little. Get him in the net. Oh. Ooh. So like. Just kicked. He's side hooked. You got to get him up. So yeah, you can use 50 pound braid, really light rod. Like you can use like a bass rod. You can have a great time. They can fight 10 times harder than bass. This is a three pound fish. If this is a bass. He'd be in the boat 10 minutes ago. Woo. Come on, bring that fish up. Uh, I gotta get some more drag on this thing. Yeah, I don't know why he's still spinning on it. Look, I'm a fisherman. I don't want to just drag him in. No, that's a googan. He's he's side hooked. So he's side hooked. All right. Nice. All right, I'm catching one. You go catch him. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. Once you get on these fish, the bite they bite good, and all colors of the goofy jigs work well. Brian's using a pink and I'll show him. Um, chartreuse one, and I'm just using straight pink. They seem to like them all. I'm not a baby. I got him with the pliers because he's like, just see how side hooked he gets? So that's a goofy jig. And we'll talk about it a little more tackle time, but we gotta get on the fish. See that? Yeah, we got one. Get it, Sizzle. What's net? No. Oh, you are crazy. Oh, Yay. my heart. <laughs> All right, guys, we got to start heading in there. Darcy's going to clean these fish, and I'm going to show you how to cook them. This is one of the most delicious fish that you're ever going to get. That's why there's so many boats out trying to catch ever. them. Yeah, it, they're really just delicious. And they fight like heck, and they're pretty common, so they're really a great fish. So now it's tackle time. I'm going to show you how to, how, to, how to catch them. Now, I already told you about the rod and reel setups. Some real light tackle, and you can just kind of have a great time, OK? And yeah. we use Nothing fancy. Yeah, don't even fancy, like a BG, a Daiwa BG, or a Okuma Azores, like a two or 3,000 reel is all you need. And we used today, we went to the Snook Nook. You know, we love the Snook Nook. And if you guys ever come down to Florida, Palm Beach, oh, actually Martin County, right? Yes. Jensen Beach, go to the Snook Nook. If you're local, you know it's been there for 200 million years. And it's almost like an historical attraction. It's been, it's right in the water too. You can get it by boat. Anyway, you know my buddy Paul Spurko, he's making uh, goofy jigs. These are called goofy jigs, right? And you can try different colors and you're gonna tie them on with a loop knot. You guys know what a loop knot is, right? You can Google that or we'll tie one one day. But see, we've got a big loop here and you put one face in one direction and the other face in the other, the teaser, okay? And you usually have two different colors for these, right? Uh, if you want. And Darcy likes a big four inch loop. So it goes like this. Yes. And then you're gonna cast it out and hit the bottom and you do like a, just a jerk, jerk pause, okay? It's, and it's almost like, it's like finesse fishing for you bass guys, right? It's like using a worm, right? Yeah. Or a flare hawk, it's the same, same thing, right? And you're gonna, whatever, they have different weights and whatever weight matches the depth and the current you're gonna do. If you're not feeling the bottom, you're not catching a popping, all right? So you want to make sure that you feel it, rub it against the bottom. Exactly. And hitting, and then jerk, jerk. Exactly. Pull it to the bottom. And then also just this uh, whole rig right here, like slide that teaser back and forth. That teaser is going to go up and down in the water column. So when this hits the bottom, that the bottom. teaser, like Ooh, that see, teaser's going to fall, and it's going to fall slower. And for whatever reason, Pompano love that and go crazy for that teaser that moves, and it kind of mimics a shrimp, they think, or whatever other, you know, like um, yeah, like uh, mussels and oysters and stuff crazy, they eat on the bottom. I'm sorry, look at these crazy colors. So you can use whatever you want. Yeah, and you're going to use whatever colors work that day. So you're going to have to constantly switch up colors to see what works. And today for me, it was pink and white, and then I switched to yellow and chartreuse, and I lost a ton of. Today. Yeah, that's why I went this And one. so now I have, this is the <laughs> last colors. of what I have. Yeah. Now, Darcy, now, when you actually get the bite for the top, now she is the, I know how to fish, guys. I know how to book, I'm like a book fisherman. I know how, I know I can read and how to do it. But she actually does it. She has a touch. Tell us how you actually get the bite. Um, yeah, you just <laughs> cast it out and you, you, you know, you, well, I was just twitching once and then letting it pause and about every three, four seconds you twitch it again, but very light twitches, just barely raise it off the bottom. And then you feel like a little nibble there. And then most, most of the time this fish was there. So then you just set the hook on them and then they instantly pull drag and that's a lot of fun. Right, and a few it's, times, it's, a J -hook, it's a J hook, of course. So you got to give it a little jerk. Exactly. Yeah. And all of them were mostly hooked on the teaser. Uh, but some did end up eating the actual goofy jig or pompano jig, you would call it. And um, yeah, that's pretty much how am. you do there it. I am. Pretty simple. I just learned how to use a camera. Pretty simple. All right, so when you get home, Darcy's gonna clean them for you, and then we're gonna have a delicious meal. Yes. All right, let's go. I'm so excited. <laughs>
All right, guys, it's time to fillet our delicious Florida pompano. And I'm so excited to fillet this fish and have it. We're gonna decide, we just decided to do this as a sushi, fresh pompano sushi. And if you've never had it before, you're missing out. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. I'm just getting my knife nice and sharp with my diamond edge sharpener. You always want a sharp knife, especially when it comes to sushi here. So we're gonna cut it right on camera and get this beautiful fish filleted. And the cool thing too that I wanna announce too, on the website, I've got brand new uh, Florida pompano pendants, sterling silver pendants that look exactly like the fish. How cool is that? And I know you guys love to catch pompano. Pompano is so relatable. You catch them up and down the beach here in Florida. And this is the time of year to go and do it. So if you're interested in these, they're on the website. Go check it out and you wanna support my small business. Let's dive right in using my seven inch blade today. We're gonna go right behind the fins, but you wanna make a 45 degree cut. Go back a little further. Up towards the head so you get as much meat as possible. Now these fish have a lot of head meat. You're, you would be super surprised how much head meat is here. So we don't wanna waste any of that, of course. Look how far you could go up there. That's insane. A lot of people just make their cut right there and then you miss out on all that extra delicious meat. So now we'll just follow that backbone right down as always, as any traditional fish, just like so. This fish is easy to fillet, but at the same time, I would say it's a more difficult fish to fillet because the skin is super thin. Also, it's easy to cut through their bones. So you can easily cut through to the other side if you're not careful, which is not a big deal, but it just makes your life a little harder. So now we're just gonna follow these bones. See, almost cut through the other side. This, this knife is so sharp. Then they got a little bit of a raised spine bone here. It's not too, too big. And then just angle back down. And we'll slab off this beautiful section of meat here. Their meat is actually pretty firm and white once it's cooked. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have pompano and you wanna go ahead and sh go ahead and share some awesome, awesome pompano recipes with us. Go ahead and drop that down below. Um, but they also have a good ama amount of fat content. So once cooked, they pretty much look white. And now there's rib cage bones right here too. Those do not protrude as much as like snapper or grouper or anything. So I, as always, it's like I like to say, don't cut through those bones, leave the innards intact. And look at this fillet, beautiful. Also, I would recommend when you catch a pompano to bleed it right away. I do not bleed this particular fish, which is not a big deal, not the end of the world, but go ahead and bleed it as usual. But see all that head meat we got out of there? I mean. We did not have any waste, no waste whatsoever. I don't know if you can hear that, but if you can hear the bones, that means you did a good job. Now let's get the other side knocked out. All right, so that fish is now done. Good job on that, you can see right through them. That means you did a good job and don't forget, always get that head meat out of those fish. You'd be surprised. A lot of fish have so much head meat. Now we got our two beautiful pompano fillets. First thing we need to do, of course, is go ahead and skin them. And the skinning is also difficult, like I said, a little bit. So what you wanna do is you kinda of just wanna go parallel with your cutting, um, whatever you're cutting on. So kind of keep your knife up a little bit. And I'm gonna show you exactly why these fish have a dark line and dark blood on their actual skin. Even if you do bleed them, they'll still have this. So you're gonna leave a little bit of meat on the skin, which is not the end of the world. You see right there, See how that's thin that is? That's not a big deal. We'll just knock that out right out. But I cut through that pretty easily. And like I said, you just want to leave a little bit of some meat on there. And you can see right here why we do that. It has all that fishy stuff right there, which you don't want to eat, particularly when you're having it as sushi. All right, so we're going to put this one to the side and we're going to get our cutting board right here and we're going to prepare him for sushi. So now I just want to go ahead and knock out that last piece of skin. We don't want to eat that as sushi sharp knife gets a job done here. And then the same thing with his bloodline. We're gonna remove that bloodline completely. There's of course pin bones that go back to about halfway. So you wanna get those out as well. And kind of angle your knife and get all that dark red meat out. Because like I said, it's not going to be good for sushi. And basically he's all set for sushi. All right, so we got our two loins, like I said. And so now what we're gonna do is, we got a top loin and a bottom loin. Now the top loin is gonna be best for sashimi grade meat. The bottom loin is going to be, or belly meat, is going to be for sushi meat. So I'm gonna show you two ways of cutting this up. We're gonna use the same exact knife. Let's get it nice and clean. And then what we're gonna do is, since we got head meat here actually, we'll just probably cut it like this. But you wanna go at a 20 degree angle and we're gonna make bigger size chunks, like I said, for sashimi. 
There's his head meat. That's going to be delicious. So you want to go at 20 degrees and just don't saw. Make one nice stroke, just like so. And that stuff right there, about four or five pieces of that, is going to be worth approximately five to six dollars at a sushi restaurant. So they'll sell it to you like so. So that's our sushi, sashimi. And then with our bottom belly meat, we're going to make that sushi meat. So now how we do that is we're going to make it thinner, of course, and we're going to go more to angle and just go one nice swipe. There's one. Ooh, I'm going to start high enough. Just like that. And then you want to have, when you cut these thinner, you want to make sure it bends over on your finger a little bit. If it doesn't, that means you made it too thick for sushi pieces. So that's actually a perfect piece. Same thing here. Thinner the better, especially put in. Put in likes it thinner. Ooh, that's a nice piece right there. I'll make a few of these. We're going to eat it raw right now. Delicious. Nice. All right. Let's go ahead and eat them right now for the taste test. Did someone say taste test? <laughs> <laughs> Time to eat, guys. Ooh, all right, I got another. It's going to be delicious. I can't wait for this, guys. You know, I love sushi, being a fancy New Yorker. And I've already planned, I got a little, we made some uh, sticky rice inside. It's so easy, just read the instructions on the thing. Yes. On the package, and uh, there we go. Oh, I got one more sushi. Forgot my chopsticks, but we'll just eat with our hands. No big deal, we're outside. They're all saying, you're not even rinsing that damn fish anyway, Dark Sizzle. <laughs> I rinsed the blade, I did it on a clean cutting board, so we're not even gonna rinse it. Yes. No, I took care of this fish. He was honestly caught yesterday and he was been in the cooler, ice and cold, and he's fresh pompano. Doesn't totally get fun. much better than that. So we got beautiful sushi pieces and sashimi. Mm -hmm. You have little rice balls, maybe it's a little smaller than a golf ball. And then for your for your sushi pieces, what you want to do is take a piece of wasabi. This piece is actually gonna be for Brian because Brian loves wasabi. Yeah. And I rub it right on a piece of sushi that you want to put on the fish. Just like that. Is that too much for you? No. Okay, that's good. I like it hot. Brian likes it hot, I don't. And then you take it and you put it over the fish. And then you kind of just want to fold and turn, fold and press down on both sides and just fold that around the fish, around the rice. It's a sushi bowl. And it's a bowl. beautiful presentation right there. I don't know if they can see that. But maybe you can just show them up close if you roll or something. I will. I cool. did. Cool. And I can dip it. And eat it. And I'm going to make my own sushi one with no wasabi. That wasabi gives me some kick. That's perfect mm. right there. All right, here we go. This is my first pompano, fresh, raw pompano ever. Doing it live on camera just for you guys. I've been eating it all afternoon. Brian's been having it all afternoon. <laughs> I promise you I have not. Here we go. What do you think? <laughs> well, tastes like sushi. Listen, you gotta have manners and not chew with, talk with your mouth open. I'm from Ooh. New York, I'm not familiar okay, with that. Okay, so unfortunately, <laughs> from wiping that wasabi earlier. <laughs> I totally just got that on my lip and it's killing me right now. But besides that, it is really good. Um, I would say it's just a different texture than what I'm used to with like tuna, well, like blackfin tuna we eat a lot in yeah. Oahu. But there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I mean, you can see it's I'm perfectly white. really shocked how good that is raw, y'all. Really and, uh, good. Yeah, the difference only, I wouldn't, you know, whatever. It, it, you know, all fish, and all proteins mostly, they're, they're very bland if you eat them by themselves. You know, no one eats chicken or any fish by themselves, not even shrimp or lobster, really. Mm. Um, so it, it's, just, it's not like a melt in your mouth. If you, if you make it really thin, I assume it will, but mm. what? It's not a melt in your mouth sushi, but it has it's a tiny bit more firmness. But it, I mean, mm -hmm. but there's no fishy flavor at all. There's mm -hmm. zero fishy. So it's, that's one of the reasons it's sushi. So, you know, zero fishy and it's just delicious. Like I said, like this fish is a high fat content, so I just had that pure piece of sashimi right there, right. and he's right. It does not melt in your mouth like tuna or sushi wahoo, but it's more, a little bit of like, not crunch to it, but it's just firmer. It's slightly firmer. And you can feel like That's a little bit of that oily, like texture, meaty stuff on your tongue. It's actually quite good. But Delicious. But unique and different, and I just never in a million years would thought I'd be eating the pompano raw. I mean, it is really good. Really good. No joke. I know. Delicious. So I hope you guys get to try this, and if you have, man, so awesome that you guys are doing that because it is so good. And I just learned a thing or two as well. 
and how much head meat are in those fish and how yeah. to blast catching them. And honestly, I can't wait to go do it again. So go ahead and drop a comment down below if you want to see more Pompano videos. And of course, we got more epic content coming out real soon to you. We got some awesome fish lately on our boat and uh, just been having a blast here in Florida following our dreams. Thanks yep. to you all. So thank you so much for watching this. Oh, let me just mention the sponsors. Don't yeah. forget Smith Knives. We got, we got, you know, we do it at the end now. Don't mention, don't forget Smith Knives. She has a code, fifty percent off. Down below. In the video description below, check out Darcy's down below. Nautical necklaces down <laughs> in the video description below, and uh, whatever else we use today. You know, of course. Yes. Land shark and fish angler, all that great stuff. Any info that you would ever need is going to be down below if you're interested, y'all. So thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed. Drop a like, drop a comment if you like us and love us. <laughs> and until our next adventure, follow, follow your, your dreams, dreams and keep, and keep on all catching. catching. Good morning, everybody. Darcizzle and Pudding coming at you from the beach this morning. We haven't done any beach fishing in like months. I'm super excited. I don't really want to say what we're targeting yet because I just want to kind of get out there and try to catch one because last time we tried to do this, we didn't catch a single fish. We're targeting Pompano. Oh. Listen, if we don't catch Pompano, you're not going to see this, so don't worry. Yeah. We're up here on Hutchinson Island and we have some specialized gear we're going to tell you guys about during the trip. We're using our, some like 12 and 13 foot long Akuma rods. These reels are casting. 15 pound uh, mono on here so you can cast really far, 30 pound floral leaders, and we're using special rigs from Captain Paul Spurko, and we'll tell you all about it. We're gonna be using fish bites for bait, we'll be casting out to the surf, and catching a ton of popping. There we go. All right, this one was bouncing around a little bit. It didn't look like too much, but it looks like it's coming closer to shore, so we're gonna see what happens here. I hope this is the right fish. I just casted this one out. Nice and steady. There are the S words out here too, and they always can get your fish, and they particularly love to eat pompano. You guys know what I'm talking about. Man in the gray suit. All right, rod tip down. Fish coming up. Let's see what we got. He's a runner. Runner, runner, no wonder it wasn't really kind of doing anything. The rod tip was bouncing, definitely, but you just got to pay close, close attention to those rod tips for that bite and then run over there as soon as you can. We'll let him go. That's a nice, like, <laughs> blue runner a Oahu or a kingfish would eat. Yeah, we actually caught, like, uh, another fish on our short rod. Um, I didn't have the microphone. I forgot to plug in the microphone, so I, got, I just got, I got the footage of it, but I messed up the audio, but here it is. And uh, so let me show, oh, Darcy, put these, so show them what you're doing here and what you yeah. need to bait. Yeah, so this is just your standard uh, Captain Paul surf rig. This is like the pink version, but we got the bead and the float. And I believe that's a size one circle hook, very, very tiny. Yeah. And we're also fishing one O's on the other rods. But yeah, these pieces of fish bites that I cut into diamonds like that myself. And you can see there's an old fish bite there that's been chewed apart a little bit. I'm gonna leave it there just because there's a little more stuff on there for the fish to smell and come over and eat it hopefully but it's very very simple you just run it right through your hook just like so and i like to sometimes put a second one on the bottom hook just in case because the crabs kind of get to the bottom hook way more than they do to the top hook and if papa one wants to come by and swim it eat it hopefully there'll be some bait on there for him to do so nice. all right so that's about it Tell them about the Sputnik weight too. Tell them about the whole rig while we're here yeah so this is a yeah Sputnik uh weight weight <laughs> four ounce and I believe I got this actually at Snook Nook like last year. But this is an awesome one with a long neck on it. And it really just anchors and locks into the sand and keeps your rig locked into the sand and not moving. So that when the fish comes by, checks it out, you can eat it. And then once he eats it, it'll kind of set, reset, unset itself. And these will slide like this and you're able to reel it in. Yeah, and, and, when, you're, I'm, I'm, and when you're checking your baits, these break off and you can reel it in easy. Yeah. So it's really great. Yeah, so basically yeah. I set them in position and then I'll cast that out and it'll anchor right into the sand. Easy right. peasy. And then we got a 30 pound floral leader. Correct. To, uh, well, this is 20 pound mono, uh, mono right? We, we like yes. to use 15 instead. 15 should be. That's what Captain Paul said. Yeah. And uh, a Kuma surf rod. Yep, 12 And foot. this is a, a Bass Pro beach reel. What's it called? Surf reel. Surf reel. Breakwater. Yeah. So it's spooled up totally full so you can cast far. Right. Right. Exactly. That's the key to success. Sometimes you really need that distance in order to get to these fish. So we had a bite on a long rod and we had a bite on a short rod so far. So now we just got to see. Can you hold that? My baits. Thanks. You know, we had caught a second pompano on our short rod, like not even a surf fishing rod, literally a tarpon rod that I brought just so we could have one for short. 
And people have been asking on Facebook when we're surf fishing, how far are you casting out? Listen, this is fishing. Every day is a new day, okay? I don't know what beach you're on. I don't know what tide you're at. I don't even know what fish you're fishing for. Maybe Pompano, because we are, but the fish are at different levels, okay? You're gonna cast one far. You're gonna cast one medium, you're gonna cast one short, you can see what works that day, okay? Just because Darcy caught a fish on the short at 10 a.m. at this certain beach on Hutchinson Island, which is 20 miles long, on Tuesday during the incoming tide, during a full moon, doesn't mean the next Saturday the same thing's gonna happen, okay? So you gotta fish, and you gotta find the fish for that moment where you're at. Same thing with baits, you can use different baits, right, Sizzle? Yeah. You can use uh, sand fleas, fish bites, shrimp, shrimp whatever you're gonna do, okay? I, I don't know what they're gonna bite that day. Just like when we go offshore, we have pilchards and runners and uh, thread fins, and we bring squid for dead bait, you know, all kinds of bait. The more the merrier to see what's working that day. Yep. Plan A, B, and C. Variety. Exactly. Key. All right, now I'm just gonna stare at raw tips. That's what she said. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. That was lame. Everybody's leaving. Crap. Like the days we seem to pick this week so far have been the off days. So. Well, the tide is switching right now. Traditionally. Wait, it switched two hours ago, right? No. Oh. No. That was two days ago. The tide's an hour later every day. Yes. Okay. Seven. So tr beach fishing, surf fishing, traditionally, you want to have an incoming tide to bring the w clean water in and the fish. Outgoing is pushing a lot of sand and dirty water out and generally not good. But th they've had a, a great pompano bite in the morning lately, so we came down here in the morning. Yep. It also gives us the opportunity to fish both tides. All right, so there's going to be a big lull right now as it switches from bottom of the low to incoming. So a lot of people are leaving. Also, maybe they don't have to sit here all day long and maybe they're going to work or something. But we're going to sit here and catch more fish. Hopefully. Hopefully. If we don't catch any more fish, you won't see this. I mean, this worry. is also better than the day before because we didn't get a single pompano bite. Actually, we got like two bites, a bonefish and a blue runner. Right, yeah. You got you to be out here. And we totally came out here the other day and failed yeah. with all the best intel in the world. Yeah, and right. we were here eight hours. Eight hours with, with Paul yep. and uh, whatever. Yep, but it's a slow bite today, but at least we got two fish. Now we're two for three on bites. Nice. All right, we got fish on. Fourth bite. I think it's the right kind. Woo! Oh yeah, oh yeah. Rod tip down, bring them up. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. All right. All these fish, number three, that's keeper two all day. You can see on the bottom hooks, all the fish are on the bottom hooks today, but very exciting to get on these fish. Now we have the whole entire beach to ourselves, except one other couple that is here with us, but everybody left. And now we got only our rods in the water. So hopefully just the pompano find us. But keeper number three, not too shabby. Yeah, I know. The sand is kicking me in the face. These fish are so strong. Yeah. This guy did a jump right on the surface and it was a really light bite. Um, on the rod tip. I mean, I barely saw the rod tip moving. Well, that's our heaviest rod, too. Yeah, ran over to it and then uh, picked up the rod and he was actually swimming towards shore and he didn't even realize it. And then I saw him jump. Yeah! He's a little, he's a little sandy. Just a little. I'll show him in the, in the bucket. <laughs> yes. All right. Number three. So excited. These fish are so good. All right. Got a bucket full of water here to clean them off. It is just a gorgeous day in South Florida. I think the high today is going to be like 85, and it's, it's supposed, already really hot. I'm sorry, it's supposed to be a record high today. Yes, but we're having a cold front come through real soon. Look how gorgeous this fish is. That's an ocean fish. No yellow on him whatsoever. Nice. And that fish, they have to be 12 to the fork. We'll measure on the Hair Club cooler real quick. And that's a 13 incher to the fork. 12, I thought it was like 10, 11, you said. 12 to the fork. Oh, okay. All right, nice. Stick him right in there. All right, let's get lines right back out. Nice. It's one an hour so far, but we're putting in our time. Yeah. I just want to mention, I'm putting in your time, and we also said that before, is that everyone left, okay? And that's fine, but, and I know we're not killing it. Pompano fishing and any surf fishing is really a lot about being at the right spot at the right time. You really got to go a lot. Yeah. And, uh, like, we went, you know, one day they catch a ton, and the next day they catch, you don't catch that many. That, that's, what, that's what's happening to us. Yes. Um, yesterday, right here, Paul caught 14. Today we caught two or three. We're using the same exact everything. 
And uh, same thing happened to us last week. But anyway, see, everyone left. I think we had fished everyone earlier, too. We only saw one other pompano caught. We had yes. caught two. Now there's no one here, and we caught three. So, you know, a lot of it is just putting your time in. Like, we're not doing anything, not doing anything especially special that anyone else can't do if they're copying Paul right. in his seminars or right. any of our videos, but we're just here. Right. right. Time on the water. That's what we say a lot. All right, let's stay diligent. All right. Diligent, diligent and diligent. Diligent and vigilant. Vigilant. As soon as you get lazy, diligent. you're gonna miss an opportunity. You're gonna miss the opportunity. All righty, this one's ready to roll. All right. Nice fish, see him jumping. Oh yeah, that's what we want. Stay hooked, baby. Oh yeah, that's, that's him all day. Look at him on the surface over there. Oh yeah, just did a nice jump. Another jump, another jump. That's so cool. All right, rod tip down. I don't want to lose this fish. You know, we have circle hooks on these rigs. It's basically the fish hooks himself when he eats it. But I just casted this one out. Oh yeah. No question, that's a keeper right there all day. And I gotta say too, whew, on the green machine rig. Sweet. Nice job, just says oh. That's a nice fish. Yeah. All right, green machine and also the green machine or uh, power line green bait on the top. That's the first one on the top hook. And by the way, guys, I'm wearing my beautiful Florida Pompano necklace available on my website, but that's solid sterling silver. And I'll link that information down below if you guys love Pompano too. All right, let's get it right back out. The major just started. Literally All just right, started. Just what time is it? The major just started. Uh, Four so minutes let's see ago. How that works. But he we probably were ate right at the start of the major. Yeah, but we caught, uh, that's the fourth fish, and it's, we've been here, it's 11.30, so we were catching about one an hour, and we caught that one within half an hour, so I'm not sure that's the major or not, but we're just giving you guys the info. All right, let's get that power line green. Yeah. Right back out. And I will say, I don't want, I'm, not, I'm not trying to talk bad about it, anybody else, but I mean, these folks down here, everybody else left, and we've caught two fish since everybody left, and these folks down here aren't catching any fish, but... And that's not a slight, but I'm just saying that it's the little things that we're doing differently. We have Paul Spurko's rigs, which are like, tied on like very high quality fluoro. You know, we're casting out further. We're changing the baits more. So many people fishing out there, guys. So much pressure, it's so a much lot pollution, of so much global warming or whatever. You know, it's just, you gotta do these things. Oh, you're not gonna catch nothing. It's, it's not 40 years ago. All right, I'm gonna cast this out and then I think we need to check the others. Yeah, let's do it. All right, guys, let me show you how we're setting these rods today. So I just casted that out. I got my bail open, and I'm walking it all the way back down to the rod holder. I just thought I saw something on that other rod, but I'm really paying attention to these rod tips for these bites today. And let me show you exactly what we do. So once we get to the rod holder here, I'm gonna close the bail, and I'm gonna make tension on that line. So I'm gonna bring it all the way back up. And basically the key to success here with fishing for pompano is you want to have a bend in tension in your rod tip at all times when it's sitting in the rod holder. So I've got tension and now I'm just going to slowly put it in and then I'm going to adjust my drag here. Drag is very important. You want to have a very light drag. Um, it's more important to have a light drag so the fish can take it and then they can do their little run and their jump and all that good stuff. But also there's sharks in the area too. So you want to make sure as soon as you see your rod tip go slack, that usually means you have a fish on, or sometimes you'll see it bob, but a lot of times it'll just go straight up, and then you know you have a fish. So I constantly am looking up at all the rods at 24 seven and just looking for those bites. But like drag is key to success because a lot of the times these fish pull hard and they'll pull right off your hook if you don't have a light drag set. All right, so that is barely, very, very light. Bend in the rod and it's ready to roll. And it's gonna sit like that until something takes it. He's on there, he's on there, you gotta go. You gotta go. I'm gonna pass out. Brian, go, go, go. Don't let the S word get it. Shush. Go, shush. Brian, you see that rod standing straight up, guys? There's a fish on that. Let's go, let's go. Whew, that was tiring. What was tiring? We're running over here. What was tiring? Running over here. Oh my goodness. Dude, these fish are on fire. I cast it out again. Runner! Put in, does it again. Good job. At least I got some exercise. He's exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Running and COVID don't mix. Get it, Brian! 
You're killing me, Sizzle. You gotta go. He's straight up, straight up, running to the beach. Catch up. There he is. Nice. Woo. Jesus, Sizzle's got, I think you're just trying to make me do sprints. Man, the fish are chewing on the major. It's better be a papano. Yep. I did it. Keeper, get him up, get him up. That's a big one too. Woo. Nice job. Nice job. Woo, Brian caught a pompano. Nice. It's a nice a, workout. It's like the smallest one all day. No, it's not. They gotta yeah. be 11, 11 inches to the fork. Right, Sorry, Not 12. I said 12 before. All right, I'm gonna get that bait. Or large, or at least 12 of them. Oh, the bait's on there. And now we have, what do you have, five or six? This is number five. Now we have two fish in 15 minutes. <coughs> We're just getting over COVID, or not COVID, but something else. Nice. Sweet. We are back at the house, guys. It is just a glorious day out here, but wanted to tell you real quick, we caught a total of six fish, a one-man limit, okay? And really, honestly, six fish is more than enough for the two of us. We really don't need any more fish. So we were happy with that, and we left the beach very content with a lot of delicious pompano. So let's dive right into this and put in behind the camera as we get going to be cooking a new delicious recipe we've never tried before. And I'm so stoked because pompano is one of my favorite fish to eat. And I'm also gonna show you a new technique on filleting these fish today. So I'm gonna be using my eight inch knife today. And what we're gonna do is pompano have a lot of head meat. I mean, they're a member of the Jack family, but you could just go right in here and feel along where it gets hard and soft, where the meat meets the bone. And all we're gonna do here is we're literally going to knock his head out. And what I mean by that, take your sharp knife, make that cut, and we're just gonna go right around those peck fins and cut his head right out. Pretty simple, but you can see all that meat in there, but that actually has a lot of cartilage and whatnot, so we got as much of it as we possibly could. And then we're just gonna fillet him like a normal fish. And eliminating the head really just gives you leverage to get all that extra meat around the head area and collar. And now I'm just taking my time. And this fish is really easy to cut through the skin. I would say it's very close to like a moonfish or a look down. It just has like a super thin skin that runs right across, across the delicious meat. And even the bones are easy to cut through. So I'm just taking my time really bending that blade and just getting right along those bones. Oh, there's a bone right there I just missed, going right back over that. But these bones kind of just blend right into the meat. And like I said, it's really easy to cut through it for some reason, I don't know why, but last cut. Look at that, delicious. And you can see that how we just get right along there, all the innards are inside. And what we're gonna do now is just get it like any other normal fish. Get it right on the edge of the table so you have a lot of control. And I'm gonna stick with the eight inch. And what I like to do is basically get it in there and then I'm gonna keep my knife at an upward angle instead of a downward angle. Why? Because again, you're gonna cut through that skin really easily if you're not careful. So a little bit of an upward angle, you'll maybe miss a millimeter or two of meat, but that's worth it to not cut through the skin. And you see, I'm just checking every inch or so, making sure that I didn't cut through, doing a good job. All right, and that fish is done, beautiful. And you can see all that red meat right along the skin here. So it's just, it's interesting how this fish is just built for speed and built for living in the sand and they don't have crazy scales or anything like that because they don't live on the reef or the structure. They're kind of up in the troughs and in the sandy banks and stuff, eating shrimp and crabs and stuff in the sand. All right, and we just cut that little red bloodline out, a little bit of those pin bones, and we got two delicious pompano loins. But you can see here, like look at my, my knife. You can see the oil all over that knife. It's just a really oily fish with all those omega-3 fatty acids, just delicious fish to eat. But that's how oily this guy is. So just gonna clean it up a little more, finish up the other side of this fish, and just do it the same exact way you guys just saw me do. And then we'll meet you in the house for the cooking with pudding portion of this video. Oh, I'm so excited. Whew, thanks so much, Dust Sizzle, for cleaning up those pompano. That skin is so thin, it's, it's, it's very difficult to do it that well. Ex excellent job. But welcome, guys, to another edition of Cooking with Puddin'. I know this is your favorite part of the show. I've been getting lots of requests. We uh, asked on our, our email list things you wanted to see. 
all you guys want to see more cooking with pudding. So I'm bringing you a very exciting addition. We're going all out. We're not going that simple like we always do. We are cooking pompano wrapped in paper or pompano papillotti. I don't know how you say that word. I'm not French. Anyway, if you, I asked a great chef who we're friends with on Facebook, what's the best recipe for pompano? And he suggested this. I had never really heard of it before, but I guess there's some big chef 200 years ago in New Orleans created this recipe uh, based it's named after some balloonist kind of guy. You guys can all look it up, but let's get right into it. Sizzle, you get nice and close. So as you, as always, I have all the ingredients spread out. We're gonna, we have two things of pompano. First, we're taking the pompano. Sizzle, get in here so we everybody can see. First, we're gonna we're gonna coat the pompano with some olive oil. Bam, bam, bam. We have the oven already preheated to 400 degrees. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Beautiful, beautiful. We're gonna salt and pepper that. I'm not going to do too much because I'm, I'm using salted butter. Put that to the side. I'm going to take my paper. It's by the magics of mo movie magic, it's already pre-cut. Boom. You can also do this with the skin on. You can eat pompano skin. It's completely edible. Next, I got my shrimp all mixed up. We're going to put in some garlic. Nice. Mix it up. They want me to, they want me to do more salt and pepper. This is why I'm not putting too much salt and pepper on everything in the world. Oh, that was a little tough. We're going to mix it. We're going to mix it on top. This is going to have a delicious butter, lemon, and shallot sauce added on top. This paper, very common method. We've also done it with Snook with Darcy's dad. What about the parsley? The parsley goes in the other stuff. Okay. Oh, she's trying to throw me off, gentlemen. All right, now we're going to put that on our baking sheet. Let's do that one more time. All right, guys, now we're going to put this in the oven. It's going to be about 10 or 12 minutes. Nice. This is going to cook, and it's, this is going to like steam it in there, and it's going to hold all the juices in. It's going to be insane. Get that right in there. I'm going to put this on for 10 minutes because, you know, I, I like the undercooked fish. All right, let's make the sauce. All right, guys, the sauce. Oh, that's a little hot. <laughs> Lemon juice and shallots. First, we're going to reduce this. All right, guys, that's pretty well reduced. We're going to start melting in this butter. It's a lot of butter. All right, here's the last bit. Melt it in. Last step is we're going to put in some parsley. Oh, look at that. I can't believe that paper didn't catch on fire. Nice. Sizzle, so get right in here. You need to have your face right in here. Got the sauce. Let's look. Look in there, Sizzle. Ready? Oh my lord. You guys seeing this? It looks really good. This fish is cooked. Delicious. Now watch this. I think I did a fabulous job. We're gonna take it to the table for the taste test. Let's go. So you eat it like inside your paper. That's how we're eating it. I'm not totally sure. I, I imagine that's part of the appeal. All right. You don't have to, I don't know. Let's do it. It looks freaking ridiculous. It's pompano Gosh. and garlic and shrimp with, bite it with like butter sauce. The best thing I've ever eaten in my life. This is really good. <laughs> We always do special stuff with Pompano. So like I said, Pompano is like one of our favorites. Mm. This is amazing. Just as you guys would imagine, it's ridiculous. Mm. I added a little sugar to the sauce because that's my secret ingredient. Mm -hmm. But that's about it, guys. We're just going to dive in and stop talking. So <laughs> um, thank you so much for watching this video. The links to everything we talked about is going to be down below in the description. Including the rigs and everything, right? That's what I mean. That's yeah, what, really yeah. what I'm talking about. Recipe and the rigs. If you want those rigs and all that good stuff, link below and support your local businesses like that awesome Captain Paul Spurko. He's yes. amazing. Yeah. So, he can you take you on a charter and you'll learn everything. Yes. We're looking forward to doing more beach fishing real soon. And until our next adventure, follow, follow your dreams, dreams and keep, keep on catching. catching.
What's going on, everybody? Good morning. Dark is Lynn. Put in coming out to you. She's got those silly headlights still on. We are beach fishing today, and we just caught the first fish. Broke the skunk right off, and guess what that is? A delicious Florida pompano. So we are beach fishing. Super excited. Oh my god, the water's so cold. Let's let this beautiful fish go. Nice first bite. <laughs> That'll work. It's very cold right now. As you can see, I'm all bundled up. It's a little chilly, but the sun is rising. We've been fishing a good 40 minutes so far, and that was the first bite. We'll show you exactly what we're doing today, all that good stuff. Stay tuned. It's just going to get better. All right, guys, we got a fish on over here with Paul. I'm running over. All right, guys, we got a nice fish on. So this is our buddy Paul Sperko over here. He is the Pompano King up here in the Stewart area. I'm going to link all his information down below. We're using all his rigs and stuff. This is his setup, as you can see. He's got an injured shoulder, so I'm helping him out over here. This is a really nice fish, man. And Captain Paul is also a commercial pompano fisherman. Whoa! No, it's a shark. Shark! Looks like that is a bonnet head shark. They're actually quite tasty to eat. We're gonna get unwrapped here, and I'll show you the fish. All right, guys, so that is a really nice bonnet head shark. It's a member of the hammerhead family. You can see the head there, but it has a shovel shape, so it's very different than a hammerhead. People think this is a baby hammerhead shark or greater uh, hammerhead, but it is not. Bonnet head shark, let's let him go real quick. I really thought that was a pompano, but this guy stinks. And they got some teeth there, but they really don't ever attack humans, ever. And he gone. <laughs> oh, he's sitting right there, good feet. There he goes. <laughs> that wave turned him around for a second. Ow, I got a really deep line cut. It hurts really bad. All right, we got another pompano fisherman here too. So day's just getting started and now that sun is nice and bright, but I'm looking forward to catching some more fish. You can actually eat those two guys, I think Darcy mentioned, but we have a catch and cook. Yep. If you want to Google up Dark Sizzle, They're good. Bonnet Head or whatever. They're good. Keeper! Keeper! Woo! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. On the short rod again. That is a nice fish. Pretty cool. So that means we need to cast in shorter. Really nice job though, Sizzle. Now we were just talking with Captain Paul here for quite a bit about moving because we got a little bit of a south current and the water looks like crap and it's an outgoing tide. All things you don't want, typically. But we've got two pompano, just one keeper. It's pretty we might early have to still. Give it more minutes. And other people. <laughs> Down the beach, don't seem to be catching too much either. That's what I think about moving. So dirty fish. You know, it's, it's, like it's a fishing. We don't know. Yeah, that's like a thirteen to the floor. Clean fork. that fish off before you show it to my people. I'm sorry. You can't be showing that dirty ass fish to these nice folk. <laughs> pretty fish. Beautiful. Let's get it in the sun. That pretty, might be the only fish, fish we catch today. You never we know. We gotta get those lines right back out. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's now time to reset them, bring them in closer, and then fish. talk to you guys again All and right. tell you how we're catching them. Yeah. We got a fish on. Saw the raw tip bobbing up and down. Definitely a slower bite, but hold, we're hold on a second. I'm fishing. today to catch some fish. And let's see what it is. I think it's the right fish. It feels like the right fish. That That's like going to keep. That's that going to keep? keep. That's going to keep all day. You're killing it. Woo! Another nice pompano. And so all I'm going to do is I got a bucket of salt water right here, and I'm going to bleed them out. It's going to make the fish taste a little better. So I'm literally just going to go in here and rip his gill plates and he'll die quickly. All right, let's get lines right back out, catch some more fish. All right guys, we just had another great bite and uh, we found out the no float rigs are, are working. So again, you're gonna cast out different distances, see where the fish are. You're gonna use different colors and different rigs, see what works, say no floats are working. But real quick, over our gear, you're using a Kuma surf rod, 12 foot surf rod. This is a, a, a Bass Pro Beachmaster reel. You can see this big spool for casting far, okay? We have 20 pound mono on here, high viz. We prefer 15 for better casting. We got a uni the uni knot on our 30 pound fluorocarbon leader, which is about 10 foot. And then we got Captain Paul's rigs, okay? You can get these at fishbites.com. You can get these at uh, Snook Nook, Bait and Tackle, and uh, follow uh, Captain Paul on Facebook for the latest information, okay? There's all different colors you're gonna use. And then about the bottom, we got a Sputnik weight from Mr. Sinker guy, what's yep. his name? The Sinker guy. Sinker guy. And the Sputnik weight, and you cast it out and it sticks. And then you reel it in, and these release, and you reel it in nice and easy, okay? Uh, so super great rig. Uh, this is what the commercial guys are using, so that's what you guys should be using too. Let's get more fish. Brian caught that bite. Just trying to reel, because the last two bites, we had cutoffs. 
from a you-know-what, I think. At least definitely one of them was. Something ate my fish. But this is just swimming to the beach. I am just trying to really keep it, keep it tight. What is it? Oh yeah, no question that's a keeper right there. All right, we were just checking our lines because it's been about, I think close to an hour since we got any bites. And sure enough, the last one we put out a little short while ago, I found a, uh, a sand, dead sand flea in the surf and I picked it up and put it on this rod. Short pompano on the sand flea. I had a sand flea rigged right there and that's what got the bite. And you can see that we are using no beads, no floats. That seems to be what the trick is today. That's the littlest pompano I've caught in a long time. But also good to see. Target species acquired once again, but we're gonna let them go real quick. Just gonna throw them out. Hi, buddy. All right, I just turned around. You can't not stop looking at these rods. And I saw the line was completely slack. These fish are just making it go slack and swimming around with the bait in their mouth. Saw the fish jump out there too. So let's reel it up and see what it is. Well, you can see how far the ocean has fallen back. We have almost a slack tide, dead low. Ooh, he's making a run right here. What is it, what is it, what is it? Yeah. It's a bluefish. Cool, I'll take a bluefish. Yeah. What is that, a cocktail? I would say that's a cocktail. Cocktail blue, look how pretty nice. that guy is. Nice, it's been a while since we've caught a yellow-eyed demon. <laughs> but I know a lot of you guys in the Northeast watching this would, wa would eat this fish. This is a nice fish. Maybe we'll eat it. Maybe not, pompano's way better. This is what you eat in Long Island when you can't catch pompano. There we go. All right, there he is. Actually, he doesn't have really a yellow eye. It's kind of pretty. Nice fish, I'm gonna keep it. Our buddy, Captain Paul Spurko, is about to leave. So I actually have a bunch of stuff here for him and I'm gonna just give it to him because he, just, he does so much for us and gives us all those awesome rigs. Oh and so we got all of huge variety of knives for you from Smith Consumer Products, my, my sponsor that makes my Garcizzle knives, but all kinds of cool stuff. And I also figured I'd give you like a bunch Oh, um, sure. for Randy too. So like give whatever you want to Randy because I know he fishes. Fantastic. So all that stuff is for you. Thank you. And also I'm giving you this bag of fish hook and anchor bracelets that I make. <laughs> and a lot of them are gold because okay. I know you guys like gold. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, so give what? them away or keep them or whatever. Well, so I don't care if I caught any popping them up, up today or not. Yeah. I mean, this, this, so this is phenomenal. one of those might become your lucky fishing hook bracelet. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> all right, put it good. to the test. Good. Thank you for the knives. I just You're said very to welcome. Uh, Brian that I've used the last one you gave me. I mean, I'm still using You're it. You're still using you know, it? Oh, yeah. Good. It's just a great knife. But great boy, to I, hear. I certainly appreciate it, and it's always fun fishing with you guys. Awesome. Always. We always. can't wait till next time. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get you a plastic bag, too, because yeah. I... You're almost ready to that beautiful? We'll clean these fish back at the house. Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. Nice. Spent right. a lot of time getting my knives nice and sharp. She is getting... Guys, she's getting so good with these stones, sharpening it on the stone, it, it, cutting paper like... like Butter. Like a hot knife through butter. Yes, you're doing a great job. So yeah, and just by sharpeners real quick, you know, the pull through is super easy. You can put it in your pocket, you can take it backpacking, you put it in a boat, but the stone is gonna take off less stuff. And if you get good at it, and anybody can, anybody can get good at it, you can uh, really make your knife sharper and, and it's gonna make your life your knife last longer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. She knows. Yeah. And, oh, and here's the big one she's been using from Smith. The tri hone. The tri hone. This thing here. Yeah. Anyway. And it just rotates. It has three different sides. Nice. Different. So are we ready to flay that bluefish? I am. I'm a just bluefish. kidding. Listen. <laughs> wait. I was like, wait, what? What? We're not, I'm not eating that darn bluefish, guys. We're going to eat pompano. These better. are way better. This is like 100 times better. 100 times better. I don't, I don't know if you're aware. Get ready, Sizzle, to do this. Yes. Can I get my... I forgot my freezer bag. Okay, hurry. Let me go it. grab it. I'll go with you. Now, I don't know if you guys are aware or not, but I'm from Long Island. I'm 55 years old, and I've been fishing my entire life, catching bluefish my entire life. My father, here's a picture of my father catching bluefish, catching snappers at Belport Dock. He was born in 1941, so that's how long ago this was. This is the dock, I caught snappers at that dock. Here's me when I used to go offshore trolling and I'm riches with my father catching bluefish. Here's my sister catching bluefish in North Carolina. So I know about bluefish. I know you can't cook them and eat them. I live in Florida now, we're gonna eat good fish. <laughs> All right, let's get to the pompano. <laughs> All right, so we got our two pompano here. We got dinner, can't really complain about that. We got my Sizzle custom knives, of course, the six and the eight inch curve fillet knife that I designed. 
But let's just dive right into this. You can already see the blood that coagulated right in the gills where I cut them. So I've done in the past the head method where you remove the head, but we're not gonna do that today. I ended up deciding I don't like that and I tried it on a few different fish, I mean a few different pompano. So we're just gonna go the standard way you fillet every other fish. And I'm gonna cut way up into his head as much as I possibly can. They've got a lot of head meat. Look at that, all the way down his head. Yeah, like a mahi almost. And then just turn it around. You go all the way down his back. It's just super easy to cut through the other side of this fish. I just feel like their bones aren't as tough as other fish. It's just interesting. And a lot of people say they don't have scales, but they have the tiniest, tiniest scales. Like that's a scale right there. But um, yeah, I'm excited. We're just gonna play up this guy. I'm gonna get real low here. Make sure I can make the right cut with this knife. I'm just gonna let it go right over those bones. This, this just takes practice, learning what to feel with your blade and how it feels as you fillet a fish. There we go. And now this is a tricky part because you can open up their innards pretty easy in a certain section. So we're gonna try to avoid that. You see how easy the sharp knife is making this look. Done. That's gorgeous. And there's actually like just a little sliver on this top side. That is like excellent raw. You gonna eat that? Yeah. Let's see. That is like super excellent raw. That's the best We've part. had that before too. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Really good. All right, now we got all the meat. Yeah. Now, I'm just gonna switch knives because I don't wanna make a mistake here, even though I could use this. I'm just gonna go with the aid so I avoid like missing this spot because this is kind of tough right in this section. Anyhow, right. both knives will work. So I'm gonna go ahead and skin it, just like any other fish, right at the tail. And it's kind of difficult, but you wanna keep your blade up just a tad, not downward angle as you would with like snappers and groupers. Take your time with it. It's a very thin skin. Very, very thin. Yeah. Okay, you already cut through just a little bit. That's because you were talking. But what I'm gonna do to Here's avoid trick. that, yep, I'm gonna fix it right now. This part of the head meat kind of peels right off for some reason. But I don't want to peel it, but just to start it. Now, go back down the back side. All right. Ooh. Just a tad, not a big deal though. But you see, I was making a big old cut there and I just started back the other way and cleared most of that. So it happens, like I said, there's the thinnest, it's literally the thinnest skin in the entire world. But we got that off very easy. And all we gotta do now is just knock out that red blood line. And we're gonna have two delicious loins. Like you, a Florida pompano, you yes. Could, you could even cook that. And actually the skin you can also eat. Fr frankly, we don't like to, but you could. Yeah. Yeah, I hear about it all the time. You guys love to eat the skin. It's edible. All right. All right, guys. Meet you in the house. Very excited. We're going to be cooking Darcy's favorite recipe. I'm so excited. Let's go. It's been a minute. It's, good. it's been ages. Thanks so much, Dust Dizzle, for cleaning those beautiful pompano and not cleaning that bluefish. Welcome, guys, to another edition of Cooking with Puddin. This is macadamia nut encrusted pompano with a coconut lime jalapeno sauce washed down with crab claws. All right, let's rock and roll. How'd I do this? Let me just check this real quick. It's coming along, it's coming along. All right, the sauce. We're gonna put the recipe down in the description below so you can click it and, and check and look at it closer. The sauce is we take coconut milk, we reduce it down, we cook up some jalapenos, and we take the skin off just so you have the flesh Lime juice, that goes in a blender. Blend it up, bam, 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 all right? The fish, a cup of macadamia nuts, a cup of uh, breadcrumbs, do your standard wash, eggs, into the mix, into the frying pan, about two minutes each size, depending on your fish, of course, don't overcook it, okay? Looks like we're just about done here, let's plate. We got the fish. Oh, you know what, let's do the rice first. What is this, this is, we got jasmine rice. Pudding's on a diet. We got a small plate, a small spoon of rice. Very nice. We got our fish. Boom. 
Boom, look at this. We got our sauce. There we go. There we go. All right, let's take it to the table for the taste test. All right, Dar Sizzle's favorite meal. Oh man, and topping it off with stone crabs, like living the life, living the dream over here. Couldn't be any better. We're so spoiled. This is incredible, you know. Work so hard for all of this, but very spoiled. <laughs> Yeah, and I was just gonna say, like, you know, we didn't catch a ton of fish in the beach, and uh, that's no. beach fishing, but who cares? We had a yeah. good time. Did enough for a meal. We had, we had a great friend, Paul, and we caught enough for dinner. Yeah. I mean, how, how much more do you need? I don't need to share it with my friends all the time. I don't need to. I mean, I, I love you guys, but all the neighbors eat enough fish. They do. <laughs> it just starts you cleaning more fish for the neighbors. Yes. That's it. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Oh, yeah. This is heaven. <laughs> now, now I know why Darcy's favorite meal are reminded. This is definitely one of my favorites. Maybe because it's high calories. I don't know. But that nutty coconut flavor. Yeah, so good. With the jasmine rice is just perfect. Yeah, and the and the, uh, and the texture. The texture, that's what I'm saying? Or the, whatever. I mean, the contrast between the crunchy fish. Mm -hmm. I, I cooked it in oil. You can also do it in butter, but I did it in fish. You get the crunchy with the sauce on top, and you get the combo. And you got the texture and everything. It's awesome. It's so good. All right. Oh, man. Well, we're going to link that information down below. Everything that we fished in this video will be linked down below. Please go check it out. And Captain Paul does charters, too. So you want to go fishing? Yes. He'll put you on the fish. You, Contact him. Whatever money you spend on him, you're going to save a 1,000 hours in time and, and nonsense on the beach. Mm -hmm. Trust me. So until next until time. Until our next adventure. <laughs> follow your dreams. dreams and keep, keep on, on catching. I'm sorry. I have to, like. You got to keep eating. I'm going to eat all of this. I'm not even kidding. I have a baby plate and she has a big plate. I'm not kidding. I can put some food down. She puts food down. She only has one meal a day, but she puts it down. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Put it in Dar Sizzle coming at you. And this morning, it's a beautiful day on the beach. You're beach fishing. Yes, it's the annual black tip shark migration. And also, there's pompano around. So we've come up to the beach here on Hutchinson Island. And our great friend Paul Spurko said there's all kinds of stuff going on. So we come up here. We're going to show you about all our gear we have. We've got some specialized gear, and we hope we've got some sharks and some pompano. Yeah, that's the goal. The goal is sharks, and pompano will be a bonus. But we're going to see what happens. One guy already beat us to the beach. Oh, boy. So, so we've got to get going. We're late. Let's <laughs> all go. Right, let's hit it. Let's go. All right, guys. We're all set up. We're going to dive right into this. This fish is still frozen. Oh, boy. We've got a fresh bonita here from offshore. We're going to get a nice slab off of this guy. He's frozen. Got a fresh bonita chunk here. Like we said, we're targeting the black tip, so really want to match the size of your bait to the size of the sharks. Not the giant biggest sharks in the world here, but they're still nice sized sharks. So we got a big chunk here. We'll make sure that hook is exposed. We have filed down our barbs on these circle hooks, which is three times strong. And something just like that. And you can see we have it crimped on and we are not using wire leaders today. We are using mono. I believe this is 400 pound mono, which is great for these sharks because they're not going to cut through this mono. And then we got about four foot leader crimped on to our uh, swivel, as you can see. And that is attached to about a two foot uh, spider weight, which is going to hold in the sand. So we're all set up, ready to go. And you can see here we're going to be using a, eight, a 6,000 Shimano Saragoza paired with a star rod, which is just our simple offshore rod. This is not a really, you know, long beach rod, but this is going to do just fine for the sharks. The guys over here just told me they're within 15 feet of shore. That was not that long. When we're fishing for sharks, whether it's on the boat or on the beach, what we like to do is have really light drag. So I've set this to basically nothing. So that way when the shark takes it, he doesn't really know he's going to be hooked and he's going to swallow that bait and swim away with it. And that circle hook's going to get him right in the corner of the mouth. So we'll just hear this start going out and we'll know to crank it up, let him run for a few seconds and then shark on. And I think it's going to happen pretty quick here. Here we go, guys. Line just started screaming out. I'm gonna give it a second here. Come on, shark. Here he goes, here he goes. Oh no, that was the wave. <laughs> Pulling the line. See, so give him a second. He's on there. I think he's on there. No, actually. No. All right. I'll let it sit for a yeah, minute and then sit. we'll check it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good sign. Yeah, that thing took off. 
Now, you know, we're using uh, circle hooks. And so it's really, you're not going to sit there and set the hook. Right. Um, and with sharks, we've learned just, you know, just let them take it. They, you know, they bite it and then they take them a while to eat it and all this stuff. So there's no rush. And uh, I don't know, he just dropped yeah, first it. Thing when he, when, what's the first thing you do when you catch a shark? Nothing. <laughs> That's what I always tell uh, first you always, when you, have to, you guys are out there fishing, talk to everyone, communicate, talk about what's going to happen if you get a bite. Yeah, who does what? Yeah, like usually, like we're shark fishing, so the line starts going off. What do you do? You don't do anything. You just hang out. You see what happens <laughs> for three seconds at least. Yes, correct. All right. All right. Get back on it. That's one bite though. Good sign. Good sign. All right, let's see here. Starting to get some action on this rod again. Same one we just got the bite on before. Here we go, here we go. Got the bail open. Oh, oh, big splash. Oh, 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 he just took it. He's running. Make sure he gets hooked here. Stopped again. Running. Is he set? No. Come on, fish. Run. He's on it. All right, getting tight. Here we go. Stay hooked. And looks like we got a fish on. Nice. He said that drag a little better. His head shaking right now. Now he knows he's hooked. <laughs> Screaming out. First fish on, guys. More than likely, probably the target species, a beautiful shark. But we're just gonna have to see what happens. It could be anything, because you never know. That's why it's called fishing. All right, heck yeah. Here he comes. He kind of came in pretty quick there, but that's okay. Less of a fight and a workout for me. Gotta save my energy for more sharks. We're breaking off the skunk. All right, you want to do this? I got this. Hold that. We got ourselves a shark. Heck yeah. Beautiful. Relax, buddy, relax, buddy. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, I gotta jump on. There we go. Barb is out. All right, let's let her go immediately and get another shark. Come on, buddy. Wrong way, go, go, go. You're going the wrong way. There she goes. <laughs> All right, broke off the skunk. That was awesome. Get me, get my blood pump in there and get me all warmed up here. And now I'm so excited to send out more lines and get into some bigger sharks. But like we said, broke off the skunk. Not 100% sure on that species, but let her go with no delay, no pictures. Now let's get some more lines out, catch some more. Haha, -ha. Riley got a fish. It's not a pompado, but it is a big old whiting, which is also great bait, fresh shark bait, and also great to eat too. But I think for us, he's gonna end up being shark bait because we need some fresh bait here. Finally, got a fish on the pompano rigs from Captain Paul. Awesome. Now we, have a, we actually have an entire whiting and croaker video if you wanna watch that. Yes, this is a big one. And these are actually delicious to eat, but we're running low on shark bait. And so we're gonna make this one in the shark bait. We can keep like 100 pounds of these or something Match crazy. the hatch. Match the hatch. That's a good point. And Darcy caught that on a, uh, a kuma, a surf rod that Akuma sent us. So thanks very much. How was that rod, Darcyzzle? Awesome. Super lightweight and uh, caught my first fish on it. Broke yeah. this gun off. That's it. There you go. It's a two-piece, 12-foot rod. They have a lot of rods in varying different price ranges and work good. Sorry, little dude. Fish on! Oh, you guys see the horses going by. And I'm now hooked up on a fish. Finally just doubled over. This one was sitting forever. All right, you see the horses, guys? They've been going back and forth on this beach like all day, which is pretty cool. So I got horses in the background and just hooked a fish. Ooh! All right. I know how to do this. Captain Paul Spurco taught me, keep your rod tip down and then drag them onto shore. And it looks like it's the right species. Let's just keep them on the hook here. He freaking crushed that too. Drag, 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 drag. 
Oh, that's a nice fish, huh? That's a nice fish. That's what I'm talking about. That's a stud pom. That's my biggest pompano right there ever. Get him away from the water. That's a huge pompano. Dude, that's popping. That's popping. Go, go, go. Get this one. Grab it, grab it, grab it. You underneath me. Hold on, you're underneath. Let me go under. That is a stud pompano. Oh yeah, I got a fish. Um, I don't know, it's nothing. Oh, we're gonna eat him. Look at that blue crab. Oh, that's not a blue crab. No. That's a cal calypso. That's yeah. a huge calypso. Captain Paul's rigs doing his job. I mean, he was hooked right in the back, in the lip there and he wasn't going anywhere. Circle hook did its job and he just crushed that. And the rod just started going shaking all over the place. Look at that beautiful pompano. That is a nice fish right there. All right. I was just watching our shark rod over there and I was watching it bend. Looks like we might have a fish on. Yeah, we got something on. All right, we gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. I just saw it screaming. Unless it's got another crab. There he is. There he is. Woo! Look at jumping. He's trying to jump. Spinner on. Black tip or spinner shark, either one. We got a shark on, finally. All right. So it was like a two hour delay there where the kind of shark shut off. And we just hooked into a solid fish now. Got that pompano. Now we got a nice shark. Woo, he ain't happy. Taking some runs here. Gonna be a few minutes before I get him close here, but we're gonna see what it is. I'm excited. It turned out to be a beautiful day in February here in Florida. And we're gonna catch and release this fish. And by the way, in Florida, you gotta have your shark endorsement for land-based shark fishing. Make sure you have that. Ooh, he's pulling some fish. See the bend in the rod? That's a good fish. Head shakes. Ooh! Angry shark. All right, we got a top shot of mono in here just came onto the spool. So I know the fish is getting close here. Feeling violently head shaking the whole time. Whatever shark or fish this is, he is not happy. But we're now, did the tide switch already? I think it's about right now. Like this is exactly Yeah, so the tide probably switch. right now it's probably dead low. And it looks like, you know, we just had that pompano bite and just got a nice shark bite. So hopefully that's a good sign that these fish are really turning on. And it's always a blast to, you know, catch and release sharks anywhere on the beach in Florida particularly when it's a gorgeous day like today in February. It's not too hot, not too cold. Perfect for a Floridian like me. All right, did you see a shark? You see him? We gotta follow our fish. Oh, he just turned. He's got black tips. It looks like it's a spinner. So it's interesting that I'll show you when the shark gets here, but I'll show you the difference between a black tip and a spinner. It's a nice fish. Look at him. Okay. Ooh, there's a big shark. We got a helper. <laughs> Pull on her. Got it. <laughs> we got a helper helping us right now, helping film us. And this fish has black tips, which makes me believe it's a spinner. Hang on. Hold on, she's squirming. Let's see if we can just pop this. No go. Try that, you're gonna cut it. It's bar there's no barbs, right? No barbs. Are you on vacation? Uh, yeah. Nice, this is some vacation. Awesome. All right, we're gonna cut the hook right here as close to the barb as possible. And that way the hook will fall out of this beautiful shark. There we go. Ryan just helped me with that. My pliers over here. All right, and that's another beautiful fish for us. All right, all right, all right. We're letting you go right Give now. Give a wave. 
right now. Awesome, we just had that helper help us grow power. All right, and this beautiful fish seems to be... It's a spinner. It's a spinner. No, it's a black tip. See all the black tips? Spinner shark, which no, we no. think a black tip would be called that. What? That doesn't have a black tip, so it's a spinner, right? It's a, it's a black tip. All right, yes, right. Right, it's a black tip. That's how you can tell by the anal fin right there. Thank you. All right, this is a big, big beautiful male black tip shark. They're so powerful. Come here, come here, I'm helping you, I'm helping you. Come on. All right, drag him right back into the water. Don't delay the release after you take the hook out, even though you can't really, you can't harvest black tips one per day. There you go. That fish is fine. That male is sending him back, self back out, but that's a solid black tip shark. Uh, definitely an adult, not the biggest one I've ever caught. I'm a little out of breath, but we have that helper come help us, which is great. Usually you should be doing this when you're filming with three people. So you can have a little bit of a shark rash there. You also never want to jump on the back of a shark. You kind of just want to straddle them, which is exactly what I did. I did not sit on the back of that shark. Successful release. Let's catch another one. <laughs> Here is my Pompano rig. These are pre-tied rigs by Paul Spurco. Like you guys have seen, I'm gonna link that information down below for you to buy them. If you're local, get them at Snook Nook and Stewart. Otherwise, you can purchase them on the Fish Bites website. And so what I did was I have a dead sand flea and we got a 1-0 circle hook here. Like I said, pre-rigged by Captain Paul. You put on the sand flea first and then you take your piece of fish bites, which this particular one I have is a uh, shrimp and I'm gonna cut that down to size. But if you put the fish bite over your sand flea, your sand flea will not go flying off your rig. And that's kind of the gist of it. You can use live shrimp if you want to, um, whatever, or dead shrimp, whatever works best for you. But fish bites are known for catching pompano. And all, all the uh, flavors work, you know, the shrimp, the crab, the sand flea, all that good stuff. So that one has a, a shrimp flavored one on, and then the same thing with a second hook. Sand flea goes on. All right, and then I'm just gonna cut that down with scissors to whatever size you like. And then I'm just gonna put that on the hook. And then on the end of the rig, we are using spider weights between three and six ounces, depending on the current and the waves. And for the setup, I'm using an Akuma two-piece surf rod, which is 12 foot and it's really lightweight. And so far I'm really liking it. It's got a really light tip on it and I can really see those bites. And when that rod tip goes slack, I know to go running over to it and reel in that fish. Right now we wait, and while we wait, I check the other rods. And I'm not real, you can use almost any reel. You know, just want to have some line capacity because you can have a, a far cast and something weird might catch your, might bite your bait because if you're in the ocean, right? And uh, we're using a 15 pound mono. It uh, casts a mile. You don't want to use braid in the ocean or at least you want to have a long top shot because the wave action, if you have braid, there's no stretch. The wave action will creep your weight back in the shore, okay? If you have mono, it's gonna stretch and your weight is gonna stay out there longer, much, much longer, okay? So that's uh, that's kind of a Guggen thing that people do sometimes and uh, you know, if you're an experienced fisherman, you're gonna know that mono out here. Or again, a very long top shot for that. And on the shark rods, you know, we need a lot of capacity because we got a big shark, so we have braid, you know, mostly full pack of braid and then like, you know, 100 to 200 feet of, of mono on top, uh, you know, to our 250 to 400 pound mono leader to our 10-0 uh, circle hook and we crimped on the barbs on that. That's it. Woo! Ow! I just really hurt my ankle running. I've been <laughs> losing so much fish to the sharks. I can't get here fast enough. So like as soon as you see like your rod tip go slack, oh, as soon as you see your rod tip go slack, you gotta run. And our rods are separated, so. Woo! Just got another fish, and that's dinner! Yes! <laughs> I just ran as fast as I could. And I was just watching these lines diligently. Oh, look at that wonderful horse poop. Don't look at that. Well, my fish didn't get into it. All right. Nice little pompano. Looks like he's gonna keep. Gotta be 11 to the fork. 
we do have a ruler, but you know, these little hooks are perfect for these little pompano because they just get hooked in their lip and it's perfect. He ate his sand flea, like I, got, I just showed you guys, that whole rig and that setup, and yeah, just sending it right back out. So the incoming has started, or uh, incoming tide with clean water. We got a wind that's blowing like right in our faces too. So we're still catching fish and having a blast. It wasn't going anywhere. All right, we got a fish on. Yeah, he's on there. Woohoo! All right, so I just caught another fresh bait. That just seems to be the key to success today. They want fresh fish and, of course, match their hatch. So I got another whiting, sent that right back out, and we got an instant bite. Now, hopefully, they don't eat the other whiting. All right, guys, shark came in quick. This is the like, quickest fight ever. But you know what? That's okay. You know, that's less of a fight for them. They don't suffer, they don't have to fight as hard, and we'll get them released quicker. So that's always a good thing. All right, I'm gonna hand the rod off. Here we go. All right, there we go. All right, that was pretty awesome. And that circle hook is gonna pop right out. Just like that, hook is out, and that's a beautiful fish. I'm not 100% sure what it is, but we're gonna pretend like it's prohibited species and let them go. Nice, third fish of the day. Nice. Let's let her go. All right. Come on. Let me see if I make sure she gets out. There she goes. There she goes. Oh. She's close. She's got it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I've done it a lot. <laughs> Experience, yeah. <laughs> yes, that was a spinner shark, yeah. Juvenile, but still cool. All right, guys. We forgot to wrap up the video, we so did. here we are. Yes, <laughs> we had a great time on the beach, and we actually were like upgrading our beach fishing equipment, so yes. we can go back out there and do it again real soon. Yeah. We had that much fun. Right, and the thing we're starting off with is getting bigger tires on the cart, so I don't have a heart attack. Like yeah, I literally Brian, had, I almost died. I had like an embolism, I think. Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> and uh, but anyway, we got that cart from Fishing Mate. It's a great cart, awesome. and. Uh, Thanks so much, guys, and that's a great car. It's very one of the most popular best carts out there. And they make huge wheels. Yeah, we're getting new wheels, so uh, to, thanks, shout out to them. And uh, we also have some new stuff on the website, Sizzle. Yes, Brian is wearing a brand new camo shirt that is available, not hooded. It's really sweet, and we got different colors available as well. A blue one, a gray, silver camo looking one, and then also a uh, ombre colored one. So that's all gonna be on the website for you guys. So check that information down below if you're interested in rocking and dark silver. Along with all the, reg all the silver necklaces and bracelets and everything else. Yes, exactly. Fish hooks and, oh, I got so much. Um, anyway, that's hair the stuff on. But anyhow, all the information will be down below if you wanna support us. We love you guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Like we said, we had a lot of fun and we can't wait to get more beach fishing videos back at you real yeah. soon. So until then, follow your dream and, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. Good morning, everybody. Our sizzle and put in here. <laughs> Bright and early. We drove about an hour and a half this morning up to St. Lucie. Not Lucy. early, it's late, it's nine o'clock in the morning. She likes to get here super early. But anyway, we're gonna do beach fishing for Pompano today. Yes. So stay tuned for some awesome pompano fishing. There's I'm also, excited. Yeah, she, we have we, not done this in over a year. I'm excited because I got new tires on my beach cart. And last time I had like two aneurysms and a heart attack dragging my old tires down the beach. Yes. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. And again, again stay tuned for great pompano. And there's also possibility of permit and whiting and croakers and all kinds of great stuff on the beach. Yeah, beautiful day. We got a west wind, so it should be really nice this morning. And again, really, really overcast. So, but we gotta get fishing because we've been just sitting here twiddling our thumbs. Yes, we're gonna tell you exactly how we catch all the fish. Let's get to it. Yeah, but first we gotta get lines in. All right, we're going. Let's go. <laughs> all right, guys, we are just putting our lines out and I got the last rod right here to send out. And I'm just gonna basically tell you, go over the rig and the rod and all that good stuff on how we're gonna catch these pompano today. 
even though we have not caught any yet. But that's okay. We got lines soaking in the water. So what we have here on the bottom of the rig, starting at the bottom, this is a Sputnik weight, also storm stopper weight, I guess you could call it. But it has a breakaway here where these pieces of wire fall out like that. So when you reel it up, it'll break like so, and then you're able to easily reel in the weight no problem okay and that's going to hold in the waves and the current out there and it just really anchors itself into the sand and that that's what the pompano like and then we got a swivel you can see a snap swivel here with just a regular swivel and then we got our awesome captain paul spurco pompano rig right here hand tied by captain paul I'm gonna link the information down below but these can be found at the snook nook tackle shop located up here in jensen beach florida and also on the Fish Bites website, but they're hard to come by because they're so popular. Uh, so you can see we got two hooks on there with the tiny little one-aught circle hooks. And then we got Fish Bites on there. Fish Bites are another awesome piece of equipment to catch pompano. Usually you can catch them with just, so, with just that little piece of Fish Bite. And the sand flea color seems to be working great, so that's what we're using. And I'm going to show you how to rig a sand flea. This is a Blanche sand flea and you would put it on here with your fish bites. Oops, make it like a smorgasbord of bait. And usually you would do this backwards. You put the sand flea on first, and then you would put the fish bites on so the fish bites will hold the sand flea. But I'm just gonna show you just to make it easy. Just kind of roll it in there, pop it right through. Take your time because they, are, they do fall off. All right, so that's how, that, that's how that's rigged. You got a bead and you got a float to keep that bait up. Then we got another swivel attaching the, the pompano rig from Captain Paul. And then our main line here, just using a uni, uni knot to it, is 12 pound mono. And 12 pound mono, two reasons why we like this, uh, it's to stop the creeping when you're cast it out. If you use braid, there's no stretch in the braid, and that's just gonna make your, rod, your, your rig creep all the way back to the shore. You don't want that, the pompano are out far, uh, especially by the next break or the next um, sandbar. So you want, 12 pound mono. Also, the diameter is perfect for casting long distances. So that's the reason why we like that. And then we just got a um, cheap 6,000 tsunami shield reel. This is not an actual surf rod, but you can surf reel, but you can use whatever you want. This works fine for us. We've caught Pompano in the past. And then paired with an Akuma um, surf rod. Pretty awesome, really light tip. You can really see the action on it. And uh, so far we like a two piece setup, okay? And that's really about it, guys. We got our sand spikes. And now we're going to cast it out. Nice cast, our sizzle. Now on, on your rods, we got four rods out. And of course, until you start catching fish, you want to vary your baits, right? Use different flavors of fish bites. Uh, you know, sand fleas on some, sand fleas, not sand fleas on others. And you're going to stagger them, one, as far as you can cast it, and then stagger them in. We even have a really short rod at the end, just in the trough, OK? And uh, with this rig, you know, we also could hopefully catch, like we mentioned, the croaker. Whiting, which are both delicious. They've been catching permit and bonefish like this on this beach. So uh, we have high hopes. It's gonna be a long day. Usually you want incoming tide, okay? Uh, and this is just the beginning of the incoming. But for the last two weeks, Captain Paul tells us they've been catching them in the afternoon. So we don't expect to actually catch fish until much later. But uh, we're trying to make a video today, so we're here all day for you. Yeah, and Captain Paul might show up. The last time I was up at Snook Nook, a bunch of you guys asked me if I was going to fish like Captain Paul again. Yeah, so here we, and we're Let's actually see. fishing with his son, Randy, who's over here. Yes. So uh, we're very fortunate. We thank them a lot for helping us out, and they give us some nice intel all the time. Anything else to sizzle? Oh. Oh, and the sizzle has to get two teeth pulled tomorrow. She can give anesthesia and everything. Please wish her luck. She's very nervous. Yes. She's never been knocked out before. I was also going to mention those Spudnik weights, those breakaway weights. I didn't mention that, but I'm going to link those down below. Um, there's an awesome seller on eBay that hooked me up with those awesome weights, so I'll link that down below as well. Yeah, Darcy, Darcy's been doing a lot of research on weights and lead and all kinds of stuff lately, so she has... I spent hundreds of dollars on <laughs> stacks of different lead at the house now. I think you spelled thousands wrong, but uh, yes, we have lead everywhere, and she does all the research, so this is... <laughs> If she tells you where to get lead or we tell you something, it's because we've looked it up and we put the view roll of all the lead we have. I don't want to talk about it. I'm too upset. <laughs> <laughs> I had to buy a new truck. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. All right, I think it's a pump. All right, so we have been sitting here patiently for what feels like almost all day, but not quite all day. And sure enough, we just saw this line go, the rod tip go slack on this reel. And I saw a fish jumping out there, literally jumping, like Pompano was jumping. Here he comes. Keep your raw tip down. 
I think it's a pompano. Make sure that drag is light. Woo! Running right there. Woo! You see him jump? Dude, this fish is full on jumping. I've never seen him do that. Rod tip down and drag him onto shore. That's what I learned from Captain Paul Spurko. That's a nice fish. That's a nice fish. It was full on jumping. Yeah! Saying thanks to Randy. We got another, we got a pompano, guys. We got a pompano. That's a nice one. Hold on, let me get this rod set up. All right, so you can see that my rigs here are completely cleaned out. So I need to rebate and get all set up here. But that's a really nice pompano for me. No complaints. But it's been, it seems like it's always on, towards the end of the incoming tide and the incoming just started a couple hours ago. So there's my very sandy pompano. Chill out, buddy. There he is, nice fish. All right, there you go. There he is. <laughs> nice fish. All right. So I think the bite is just getting started, but that was really cool seeing him jump all over the place. And he did fight real hard initially in the beginning. All right, let's get lines right back out, catch some more. Fish on. Dude, as soon as you put that out with the sand flea. Okay. So we've been having a little bit of trouble trying to keep those sand fleas on the hooks. What do we have? Oh my God, it's a tarpon. What? Do you see that tarpon roll? No. I felt it bouncing, but I don't feel fish now. Dude, it's a big tarpon just rolled out there. What's going on? Am I gonna lose my whole rig? It just pulled. It just pulled. It was stuck on something. He's off. All right. Let's see if we got the whole rig. That was weird. Oh wait, it's back on again. What the heck is going on? And now I'm getting close. Keep it down just in case it's the right fish. Oh, we got jumping. eight by a bait. That's what happened. <laughs> That's a bonefish. Is it? Yes. All right, get him, get get him right back in the water. Hold it. Let's put it back up. Hold on. Come on. Park it. Let's go. It, it was it was something else was on there first. That's exactly the tiny what happened. Bonefish? This is the world's smallest bonefish right here. I think he ate it on when I was reeling it up. He's so teeny tiny. In the water. Look how cool he is, though. Bonefish, another species. Look how cute. There he is. All right, next wave, he's going home. There you go, buddy. Go, that way. Cool. All right, send it back out. We'll catch some more dinner this time. <laughs> that was a huge tarpon. All right, this rod's getting hit every time I put it out, like within seconds. It feels like the same situation as Darcy. I hope it's not another tiny bonefish or nothing. Can't even get my rod out. It Ooh, it's, going now it's got a fish. You got a fish. Keep that rod down when he gets close. I will, I will, I will. There you go. You got another a bonefish. Bonefish, <laughs> bonefish Slayer. All right, we got to cast past them. Yep, you got to get it out further. I don't know. I've cast it pretty far. Oh, he's side hooked in the tail. He's off. He's off. You sure? Yep, he's off. <laughs> that wasn't very nice. <laughs> Let's throw a bonefish. Flying bonefish. Florida Live guys, Pie Hole Pizza on Hutchinson Island. They deliver on the beach. <laughs> you know, pudding likes that. <laughs> Thanks so much. Margarita pizza. Whoa, that looks good. Have the good stuff. Nice. And then All right. This one over here we call the goat. The goat. The goat. The, uh, That's like Dar Sizzle. She's the goat of female anguish. That's, That's kind of why I was thinking the goat. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's perfect. So the goat for the goat. Right oh, she's going to like that. Thank you. And, uh, Appreciate it. I watched your last pop in the video. Oh, you did? Cool. Yeah, pretty, pretty cool, yeah. Thank yeah, you. I watch all your videos. Thank you. Yeah, a, See a fan right there. Yeah, That's he's awesome. He's a pretty big fisherman yeah. out of here. Nice. We were talking about it one day, and he's like, hey, do you know Derek? I'm like, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I like love it. Status here at Fort Pierce. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Fish on. Stay on. Stay on. OK, so today is just the most overcast day on the beach. And there's nobody here in sight. We just have the beach to our entire selves. 
and literally this is the first bite in like four and a half hours. It's been a long time. <laughs> Ryan was falling asleep in the chair and I've been just casting around and we've just been patiently waiting for the fish to bite. I don't know what it is, but it's a fish. Hopefully, it's not acting like a pompano, but I don't know. Oh, it's a pop, it's a pop, right? Oh, it's a runner. Another species. Hey, it's better than no fish. Not much. It is not much. But that is a blue runner. <laughs> we catch these for bait offshore. Maybe the bite's turning on, who knows? But literally, this is the second fish I've caught in four and a half hours. It's been a while. All right. We got the single pompano we've caught so far today right here. Figured I would go ahead and fillet this guy for a pop Florida pompano cast clean cook right here on the beach. Well, we're not gonna cook them on the beach actually. We need a permit and you're not allowed to do that right here, but maybe in the future we will do that. Um, so let's just go ahead and dive right into this. I've actually got a brand new Luaya today from Smith. We always carry some knives on the boat, but yeah, we're all set, ready to go. Extra sharp knife. And while we got our lines out, you know, just goes to show you that not every day out here is a killer day where you catch a ton of fish. There's some other pompano fishermen out here today as well. A lot of these guys are local guys that are out here every single day beach fishing. And the most that have been caught today, one guy got two. So I think I'm lucky with just one. But we're just showing you how it is out here. How We're real, okay? So one fish, but it's enough to make a delicious meal. So let's just go ahead and dive right into this. We're not like expert pompano fishermen by any means. So we are learning and of course being out here all day, you know, this is a beautiful office as well. So attitude is gratitude. We're still having a blast, having a blast, catching a ton of fish and pompano is one of my favorites, like do delicious. So just following that backbone all the way down. Oh, also wanted to mention this beautiful Florida pompano sterling silver solid necklace I'm wearing that's available on the website as well. Wore it today in honor of pompano fishing, and sure enough, we got the target species. So check that out if you're interested in uh, beautiful nautical jewelry on my website, darcyslooffshore.com. Gonna link all that information down below as well. All right, this fish is pretty nice and cold. Been in the cooler most of the day. So we're gonna check out how delicious his meat looks. I did bleed them, and what I mean by that is I usually just rip a piece of their gill plate out while they're alive, put them in the cooler, and they usually bleed out pretty quickly and die quickly too. So that is what I mean when I say that. All right, so we're gonna just lay down. Wow, this meat looks amazing. It's been, a, it's been a while now since I've had pompano, so this is gonna be delicious. Oh, speaking of which, I don't even think I'm gonna be able to eat this fish because I'm having my dentist appointment that Brian mentioned earlier. So Brian gets to enjoy it. How lucky is he? All right. There comes one side of the beautiful pompano off. Whoa, almost in the sand. There's one. And this is a map from the truck, by the way. <laughs> it works. Let's flip them around, do the same exact thing again. And then we skip. And just really turn that knife all the way up into the head so that way you get as much of the meat as possible. Just don't go straight down because you're missing all that head meat. All the way up to the nose, there's plenty of nose meat. And then just follow that down. All right, there we go. This knife is so sharp, when I was cutting off the other side, it literally like cut right through that bone, no problem. That's how thin these fish are. I mean, you can see how thin that fillet is and how you can clearly see through that. That means you did a good job filleting the fish. All right, so we're gonna put him to the side. And let's get these skinned and we're gonna put them in the cooler. Now you can scale it if you want to. I don't recommend it on Pompano because there really is no scales on them. You can leave the skin on if you want. Some people do do that. But for us, majority of the time, we always like to take our skin off. So we are gonna take it off on this fish as well. And they have super, super thin skin. So you kind of just wanna leave your, it's kind of hard to explain, but you wanna kind of angle your knife up and you're gonna leave like a millimeter or two of meat on the skin in order to not cut through it. it takes a little bit of practice, of course. Kind of something like that. 
see there how I left some of the meat on, especially towards the head there. But you can see all that blood right on the edge of the skin, and we avoided all that. And then you just take your bloodline out, and then you have left with two beautiful pompano loins. All right, a little bit of pin bones in the front. So I would just say this is very similar to like an amberjack or a um, Spanish mackerel that have those big thick bloodlines in the middle, wahoo, so that way you're left with two loins. All right, there's a bloodline. And we got the top loin, which is also delicious as sushi. And then we got the bottom loin. And I'll clean that up, no big deal. Get rid of those bones, but you guys get the point. All right, so I'm gonna finish up the other side. We're gonna throw them in a cooler. We'll see if we get lucky with another fish, but otherwise, we're gonna meet you guys in the kitchen with Cooking with Pudding. What's up, guys? We're back home. We didn't catch any more fish. Welcome to another edition of Cooking with Pudding. We gotta hurry up because Darcy's gotta go under anesthesia edition. <laughs> All right, guys, so Pompano today, of course. You know, one fish, one fish is a meal. We had a great day in the beach with my beautiful girlfriend. Uh, it was totally awesome. You know, and those, those methods we use today, those are the methods to use. Captain Paul, uh, who we copy everything from, is like a commercial pompano guy. I catch a pompano all the time. Sometimes it bites off, all right? But anyway, I'm gonna barbecue this pompano. And I'm gonna use this barbecue mat that Darcy's cousin recently gave us. He said it was totally awesome. I put salt and pepper on these and I'm gonna try it. Um, it's especially good for like fish and maybe shrimp and kind of stuff that's gonna fall apart on a barbecue. And uh, they say it works great. So I got it right on here, you can see. Close it up. And that's gonna cook super fast and we'll see you inside for what I'm gonna create. Look at that guys, delicious pompano sandwich. Delicious, come on and hit the sizzle. Our little girl didn't feel good, she didn't no. eat or drink, quiet. <laughs> she didn't drink, she hasn't been able to it drink or eat. It is what it eat. is, y'all. So she's grumpy, she had a caffeine headache because we drink loads yes. of coffee for fishing. And uh, so that's the deal. So I just, she can't eat. So I just made a nice little lunch for myself. We're going over to the uh, anesthesia and uh, had the wisdom teeth removed. Yup. But until our next adventure, oh, follow your dream. I wasn't quite ready yet. Sorry. So, so you guys always ask about pompano and, and fit, how you cook certain fish. You can cook a lot of fish the same, okay? Pompano, you can cook like any, tons of other fish. Today I grilled it. We've done sushi. You can just put it in a pan. You can bake it. You can do anything you want. It's a delicious white, uh, semi-firm fish. Uh, highly sought after at stores and everything else. So until, until next time, our next adventure, follow, follow your, your dreams, dreams and, and keep, keep on catching. catching.